In the previous video, we looked at simple alkenes and quickly realized that um, by the time you get to four carbon uh, um, isomer of butene, you have four different isomers that you have to take into account. So as you increase the number of carbons, you're going to increase the number of isomers. And of course, you have to develop a system to name all of those isomers. And the, it's actually not that difficult to do. Just like um, with alkanes, we have this, uh, very similar rules that we're going to apply um, when using alkenes. And so essentially the rules are going to be the same with a little modification. The first modification is that when we're looking at the parent chain, it's the longest chain that contains the double bond. So you have to include that double bond in um, figuring out what the longest continuous carbon chain is. Another uh, aspect, another rule that we're going to add to our um, to our to our list of rules is that if you have a chain that has more than one double bond, then you're simply going to call these dienes, trienes, tetraenes, etc., etc. Um, and so the main difference is that instead of um, as a you know if if we have a, a parent chain that's six carbons long, instead of calling it hexane, we're going to call it hexene, and we have to give it a location, just like we um, did with, uh, with uh, substituents coming off of an alkane bond. The last little rule is that if I have a cycloalkene, so a ring, then the double bond essentially gives um, our order of numbering to the ring. Uh, so that double bond has to be between carbon 1 and carbon 2. And therefore it's actually a little bit easier to determine how to number your system. So let's take a look at uh, some examples. And we'll start off here. Um, we've already seen this, right? This is, uh, I'm just drawing it um, without showing the, uh, the carbon symbols. So we have a bond line formula of an alkene. And the alkene is four carbons long. And the double bond is between C1 and C2. And so you name this 1-butene, 1-butene, four carbons, butene. All right, so here's a, another structure. And uh, keep in mind, I have, to, um, I have to number the chain with the double bond. And so I'm going to start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I see a, um, a seven carbon chain length is my longest continuous carbon chain. I see that uh, coming off of the third carbon is a methyl group. Coming off of the fourth carbon is a methyl group. So I'll have three, four dimethyl. And then the double bond starts at carbon number one, so between one and two, so I'm going to give its location of one. And therefore I name this 3,4-dimethyl-1-heptene. Heptene, so the A and E becomes an E and E. Here I have um, a, an alkene that there are two double bonds. Uh, so if I count my number of carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, I see that there's a double bond between 1 and 2, so I'm going to give it a location of 1. And there's a double bond between 4 and 5, so I'm going to give it a location of 4. So this becomes 1,4-hexadiene, the di representing the two double bonds, and the 1 and the 4 representing its, the, the double bond location. So let's take a look at something like this. Again, if I uh, figure out the longest continuous carbon chain containing the double bond, I see I can number it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight is my longest continuous carbon chain. It's going to be octene as the base. I have a methyl group coming off of the three carbon. And I have an ethyl group coming off of the five carbon. And so this becomes five ethyl, three methyl, two octene, because the double bond is between the second and third carbon. 
Now, one thing that I, I haven't mentioned um, that I, I mentioned in the previous chapter deals with stereoisomers, cis, trans, or EZ. So you often have to think about stereoisomers when naming alkenes. You know, if they have stereoisomers, you have to keep that um, in mind. Now, an easy way to determine whether or not you have to worry about stereoisomers is looking at each carbon. If a carbon on the double bond has two of the same substituents, be they hydrogens or methyl groups or ethyl groups or so on and so forth, then there is no uh, differentiation between where you put uh, the R groups, and so you don't have stereoisomers. But if each carbon across the, on the double bond has different um, substituents, then you have potential stereoisomers. So let's look at an example here. We have, uh, this is this is three hexene, and notice um, the, there's a, a hydrogen on the, the upper left and a hydrogen on the lower right. Uh, and so if I drew this, it, you know, I, I can draw this one of two ways. I can draw it like this, or I can draw it like this, where the two hydrogens are on the same side of my imaginary plane. And now notice, I can number these two the same way. Uh, they're both six carbons in length. The double bond is uh, for, on both of them is between the third and the fourth carbon. But if I'm thinking about that imaginary plane, I see that the R groups and the um, uh, on my stereoisomer on the left are on opposite sides of one another. So this becomes trans three hexene or E three hexene. And if I draw that imaginary plane on the um, stereoisomer on the right, I see that the two R groups are on the same side. And so I get cis three hexene or Z three hexene. So always keep in, in mind if you have isomers and, and practice um, in recognizing whether you have um, uh, the potential of having isomers present. Now we run into a problem um, fairly quickly in our, um, in our nomenclature of using cis or trans, E or Z. So here I have uh, two stereoisomers the one on the left has, uh, you know, again, in, in terms of my imaginary plane, um, a, a methyl group on the top and an ethyl group, but they're, they aren't hydrogens. There are no hydrogens on this. So how do you determine cis trans um, uh, configurations? <clears throat> well, if I name both of these, notice they're both 3, 4, dimethyl 3 hexene because still the longest continuous chain is six carbons long. Um, so how do you distinguish between these two things when uh, when you don't have hydrogens, you know, two hydrogens coming off? Well, we're going to see that you have rules, more rules. And the the um, priority system that we're going to use is called the kane ingold prelig priority system, or uh, sometimes this is abbreviated CIP, the CIP system. And we'll see how we can prioritize groups coming off of a, uh, an alkene carbon. 